got back from Miami. That was a little clip that I took from uh, outside my hotel room balcony. I was staying at the Fontainebleau, which uh, I guess used to be Frank Sinatra's favorite hotel. So just played a little bit of Fly Me to the Moon just for fun out there. Uh, but anyway, coming up, a lot of fun stuff. Uh, just got off the road with Bodie, and so I was in Miami uh, for a few days after that. And then um, coming up, doing a residency this week at the San Francisco Conservatory, where I'm at every month and uh, then playing, I'll be the guest artist at the Saxophone Alliance Conference, and the week after that, Collin College, I'll be a guest artist there, um, which is outside of Dallas, and then, let's see, heading to Egypt with my quartet, uh, BYU the following week, guest artist there, uh, back out with Bodhi for a little bit, Italy later that month, so tons of stuff coming up, uh, just make sure to uh, check out the show dates on my website, because it's always really fun, uh, when I get to uh, meet some of you guys out on the road. Uh, but anyway, today, I just wanted to talk about the bottom line uh, to learning jazz standards. And look, the bottom line, it's really simple. Um, what holds people up the most when they're trying to memorize jazz standards and when they're trying to retain the jazz standards that they memorize, uh, the bottom line is that your ears have to be super solid. So many people have trouble memorizing standards because just super simple, their ears are not good enough. And it's kind of a misconception that, you know, you're just born with good ears or bad ears and that's just how it goes. Not at all the case. Um, you can absolutely improve your ears dramatically. And for me, what worked the best um, was to practice things in all 12 keys. And I find that's the, uh, the same case with everyone. And people just shy away from the all 12 keys thing so much. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned in my last video, I don't teach anymore outside of San Francisco Conservatory, but when I was teaching a lot on Skype, and even with the students that I do have now through San Francisco, when they learn stuff in all 12 keys, it's just something magical happens. Uh, I, I don't really know how to explain it. If I were to take a guess, it would be that when you learn something in all 12 keys, you're just getting 12 more repetitions of it. Um, but also something magical happens when you learn things through uh, different tonalities. Um, it's just, you know, vibrating through your body in different, you know, areas. Uh, so I, I think it's just, it's just the most important thing to do. And, and, you know, people just shy away from it so much. Um, so, uh, that's why for me learning isolated chord progressions, uh, something I talked about in my last video and a package that we have available now, it, it really did the trick because I was learning the puzzle pieces of different sounds to standards and learning them through the keys, then that's when I got to the point where I could just memorize standards practically instantly. And we've gotten a lot of really great feedback about that package because it has just so much material. It has backing tracks in all 12 keys. It has phrases that I played in that last video in all 12 keys. And, uh, and chord progressions written out for you in all 12 keys, so it makes it way easier. But there has been some confusion about how it's not connected to standards. People have asked, you know, if, if I could talk about the standards that it's connected to. You know, something like a 2-5-1, for instance, which starts the video in a 3-6-2-5, which is the second progression in the video. You know, these things are in like literally hundreds, if not thousands of standards. Um, and so yeah, it obviously could be a useful tool to connect it to standards. Unfortunately, it gets into um, issues with copyright, which is why I haven't done it. But look, uh, it's actually not meant to be practiced in conjunction with standards. When you have isolated chord progressions that you're practicing, little four bar pieces, these puzzle pieces, you're just meant to practice this and get the harmony in your ears. Just focus on that, get it through the keys, get that harmony through your ears. Then when you do that, 
with 40 different isolated chord progressions. That is so much content in there. Then, then you go back to learning standards. And instead of trying to learn a standard and it taking you weeks and weeks, and then you're just forgetting it a few weeks after you've learned it, it's a really frustrating process. Instead of that happening, once your ears have improved dramatically by going through this process, then you're gonna be able to learn standards practically instantly. So, um, I hope that uh, for anyone who was confused about that, I hope that helps to clear some things up. It's a process that is hard, it's difficult, it's not easy, and so a lot of people shy away from this whole thing. But if you just go at this weakness and, and just make your ears better, through, frankly, a, a more fun way of doing ear training because it's not like you're just like sitting in the corner of a room while you have a friend playing random chords or something and you try to identify them. Oof, that's a really slow process. This is much more fun because you're playing through the whole thing. Um, so for me, this is what worked best. I'm just speaking from personal experience here. I really, truly believe it is the best way to go about improving your ears so you can memorize standards faster. Um, and uh, so we've got a really useful tool for you with the backing tracks, the phrases on all 12 keys that I played, and the progressions in all 12 keys. We're trying to make this as easy as possible for you. So uh, make sure to check that out if you haven't already. It's on jazzlessonvideos.com. It's called The Secret to Memorizing Jazz Standards, uh, Isolated Chord Progressions, and it comes with all that in a package that you uh, download. It's all digital, and you download it and get it on your computer. And uh, so yeah, hopefully uh, some of you guys will uh, check it out if you haven't already. And I uh, really hope to see some of you guys on the road and uh, cool, I'll see you guys next time.